Today we're going to talk about how to catch way, way more bass on plastic worms. Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Before we get into the video, make sure that you punch that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. We have new content come out three times a week, all year long. And don't forget to check out our new blog site as well, thebassfishinglife.com. And we have new content come out there constantly, so be sure to check that one out. Well, I think it's safe to say that the plastic worm is probably in every single angler's tackle box across the country, if not across the world. A plastic worm has got to be the most versatile bait that is out there. We have all kinds of plastic worms in our tackle box. A Ned Rig is a plastic worm. A lot shorter, but it's still a plastic worm. Our shaky heads, our drop shots, our Texas rigs use them. Carolina rigs, they're all over the place. Worms come in small little finesse sizes, you know, four inches all the way up to magnum worms that are 12 to 18 inches in long. They come in straight tails and ribbon tails and cutter tails, all kinds of different plastic worms out there. And most of us have a variety of these particular worms. Well, today's video is talking about how to catch more bass. And I'm not just talking a few more. I'm talking way, way more bass on a plastic worm. And it all comes down to this. As anglers, we overwork our baits. We overwork them all the time. We think we really got to shake them a lot or we got to pop them a whole bunch or twitch them all over the place. And yes, we do need to impart some action on the bait. But the action that we, we give the lure with our hand and our wrist, I don't think we quite always translate to how much that moves the bait on the other end. I did a little experiment. I went out in my garage and I did a little experiment. I set up a uh, tape measure along the wall and then I had a smaller ruler with me and I moved my hand. So I had a seven foot three rod in my hand and I moved my wrist two inches, I measured it at my thumb, the tip of my thumbnail, moved it two inches. The end of the rod moved just over two feet. It moved about 26 or 27 inches. So a two inch movement here meant the end of that rod moved over two feet, which translates to the lure moving over two feet. That is a lot. And that's with a small movement. A lot of times we're doing things like this. Okay, so we're moving our hand four or five inches, which means we're pulling that bait three foot, four foot, or maybe even more. So we need to make a real conscious connection to what's going on here, to what is actually translating to the end of the rod and the movement on the bait. Now, if you've spent much time watching underwater footage or if you've spent much time out on the water yourself really paying attention to what's going on or maybe you're on an ultra clear lake and you've had the opportunity to a lot do a lot of sight fishing is the majority of the time those bites come when the bait is on the fall or it's sitting still on the bottom now think about that most of our bites come on the fall or when it's sitting still on the bottom. And on that fall, the bait is not doing much. It has a little shimmy to it or a little bit of action based on the tail as it's dropping naturally on its own, but it's not being overworked. We need to take that idea and translate it into our presentation more accurately. For example, let's say I'm throwing a uh, Texas rig worm out there and I want to hop it back. I'm going to hop it with small movements and maybe get 24 or 30 times that that lure is going to drop, just calmly fall in the water column and settle on the bottom. If I have small movements with my wrist, if I'm really popping that thing back, I might get a four foot drop 
but I might only get five or six of those in the length of my cast. Well, where, where are you going to get more bites? If you have 24 times that your bait is dropping or five times. Fishing is all about percentages. The more you can present that lure in the proper depth zone and in the way and the manner that they want it presented, your odds of getting bit go way, way up. So still put action to the bait, but it doesn't need to be as much action as we often do. So I think that's a great way to think about it. If I can get my lure to drop 24 times as opposed to five times, my odds of getting bit go up quite a bit when we understand that most of the bites come on the fall or when that lure is just sitting silently there on the bottom. Remember, a lot of lakes, reservoirs, have natural convection currents happening within the water column anyway. The cool water is falling, the warm water is rising, wind might be pushing the water, there could be boat traffic out there that's moving the water around, there could be fish moving by a lure and they are kicking their tail. So those baits are, they've got a little bit of movement to them all the time. And usually that's enough to get the bite. One of the best techniques that I know for fishing all kinds of lures, whether it's a Ned Rig or a soft plastic or a jig for that matter, is dragging. And in one of our winter fishing videos, we actually talk about dragging and how effective it is. Well, down on Lake of the Ozarks, there's an angler that I had done a television show with, and he was known as a jig angler, okay? And 99% of what he did was drag the jig. Now Lake of the Ozarks is very much a highland reservoir. There's lots of rocks, chunk rock, gravel rock, pea gravel. So the bottom is definitely more of a rock type of a composition as opposed to a vegetation that you might have up north. But he took that jig and he dragged it. Gave very little action to it. He'd throw it out there, and he'd take his rod, and this is what he'd do. Just pull just pull, keeping constant contact with the bottom, letting that lure just drag in the bottom, reel the slack up, just pull. He was always in contact with the bottom, was not overworking that jig, and I'll tell you what, that guy was hard to beat. He was always up in the top of the tournaments, he was always catching fish, I don't care what time of year it was, his jig and his dragging technique would bring him to the boat, but he never, never, never overworked the bait. It was almost difficult to fish with him if you're an angler who likes to really, really move and, and you know power fish and go shoot down the bank. Because he would get up to a, a shoreline that he felt was a high percentage area based on the time of year and what mode the fish were in, just slow and methodically dragging that jig, and boy, I tell you what, he caught a ton of fish. He taught me so much about not overworking the lure, and we can take that same method, that same dragging method, and apply it to our worm fishing, whether it's on a drop shot. We can just hold it there, let it drop a little bit, go ahead and pull it up a little bit. The Ned Rig, we know dragging and dead sticking a Ned Rig is so effective. Our Wacky Rig, when do most of those bites come in the Wacky Rig? when it's just fluttering down, okay? We may pop it up and then it flutters down. So not overworking the bait pays huge dividends, especially on those tough days, those bluebird days, those high pressure days, those days when it seems like we can't get bit. That's the first thing, slow it down. Don't overwork those baits. The whole key is to look natural. We, we want our offerings to look as natural as possible. So if, if you have observed much life in the water, whether it's minnows or, or crawdads moving around, whatever it might be, even when something that is considered prey, okay, like a crawdad, a minnow, a shad, whatever it might be, even when they are under duress, okay, and a bass takes off after them, their movements, they may really bolt or a crawdad may really, you know, shoot backwards, but it's only for a foot or two. Or that shad will poof, shoot off to the side or shoot off to the side. They're, they're not endurance type situations where that shad is going a hundred yards down the bank just flat out. No, they're short little bursts of movement with a pause. So we want to look as natural as possible. Predators like 
easy meal. So they, if they can come across an unsuspecting crayfish just slowly moving along the bottom. And if you've ever watched crayfish on the bottom, there's a lot of times they aren't moving at all. They're just sitting there. So that is what the bass are used to seeing. They're used to those prey creatures just sitting there not moving or moving very, very slowly. And that is our goal is to imitate that. So I hope that when you go out and you worm fish this upcoming season, you can get so many more bites. You can catch so many more fish by not overworking it and then present the bait where you get more falls as it comes back to the boat so smaller hops but more of them and then leave it soak leave it dead stick on the bottom more often than you have in the past and i promise you you're going to catch more fish way more fish on a plastic worm hey don't forget to go out and encourage someone today because you never know how you just might change their life for the bass fishing life i'm your host steve rogers